While we celebrate the 100th anniversary of our organization's founding, the influence and contributions of our people in Biloxi reach even farther back to the late 1800s, when the first immigrants from coastal areas of Dalmatia in Croatia, then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, arrived on the central Gulf Coast. Biloxi was an emerging leader in seafood production and canning as the Industrial Revolution slowly emerged using steam to better process and preserve product that previously had a short shelf life. As the 20th century arrived, Biloxi soon became the seafood capital of the world, in large part due to the contributions of the many Slavic descendants whose dedicated work ethic helped power the factories that covered the city's east end. Sailors from the coast of the Adriatic Sea found economic opportunity on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. They heartily embraced the area's safety from ongoing conflicts that had plagued Austria-Hungary. Biloxi seafood processors were instantly impressed by the hardworking Slavs like Nikolai Skrmeta, who it was said did the work of 10 ordinary men. Factory managers and owners encouraged Scrimetta to invite family and friends to join him in the seafood industry in Biloxi. Many arrived by ships from ports in Dalmatia through New York's Ellis Island, headed to Biloxi. Economic opportunity and the promise of family employment drew scores of Slavs from Dalmatia and also attracted immigrants from that area who had already made the Gulf Coast their home, such as Giovanna Dubaz in Pensacola. By 1903, Dubaz brought his wife and sons to Biloxi on his new schooner, the Maggie K. The night they arrived, they slept in the channel and described awakening in the morning to the sights, the smells, and the sounds of the big factories lining Point Cadet. The Slavic influence permeated the seafood industry, from mothers and children working as shrimp pickers and oyster shuckers, to fathers serving as factory laborers, managers, and soon, even owners. They used to blow the whistles early, early in the morning, I mean, they got work. If they didn't blow, they never had no work. That's right. You know, if you, you, we, we understood all the whistles when they were different sounds. Yeah, we knew that factory was blowing, that factory was blowing. We knew the sounds of the whistles. And then if they didn't blow, well, they never had no work. About three o'clock in the morning, my mother, uh, we, I'd get up and we'd get up and mother would make coffee and and give us a little bit of something, you know, and then uh, then we'd go take off and go down to the factory. It'd be about four o'clock. We worked real hard too. They'd pile up shrimp on the tables. Yeah. They'd, they'd have big uh, tubs, and they had two men, and they and they uh, they dump they dump all the shrimp on a table, big piles of shrimp, and and the oyster ca cars, they had uh, t three big oyster cars, and eight women worked on each car. The oysters was prepared with a pressure cooker. It was a steam box, they called it. They steam those oysters and some of them would just pop right open. And some people used to eat more than them that they used to put in the cup. Not me. Mm -hmm. Never, me? never did either like cooked shrimp. They used to have a, a, a cooked shrimp in, in a packing room, they called it. You, where you pack oh, wow. them and weigh them. They used to go in there and get hands for them. That's something I never did do. I did. I, ate I some, never did care for that. I ate some shrimp. As their numbers grew, the proud Croatians embraced their new country while always celebrating their heritage. And so it was in December of 1913 that the Austrian Slavonian Association was formed by a core of 10 charter members, including the first club president, Jacob Stanovich. The object of the association was twofold, benevolent and social. Those two founding principles still guide it today. After the dissolution of Austria-Hungary at the end of World War I, the charter was changed to the Slavonian Benevolent Association of St. Nikolai. 
membership steadily increased and came to include a ladies' auxiliary. In 1930, a lodge building was constructed on Howard Avenue near Pine Street. By now, the Slavic influence permeated Biloxi, from business leadership to education and politics. Although the nation itself was struggling to recover from the Great Depression, Biloxi still thrived in large part because of its seafood industry. And the Slavic immigrants were migrating yet again. This time it was a professional migration from the factories on the point to the banks downtown, to City Hall, to medicine, to the legal profession. It marked not only a new beginning for the rapidly expanding lodge membership, but also underscored the civic contributions of the second generation of Slavic descendants in Biloxi, as embodied by physician Dr. Joseph Kuljus, dentist Dr. Stephen Patalo, attorney judge John C. Cool, and pharmacist Tony Rossetti. Firmly positioned within the fabric of Biloxi, the Slavonian Benevolent Association made its boldest move to date with the construction of a new two-story building on Myrtle Street that was dedicated with much fanfare in 1938. Basil J. Rusevich, Yugoslav Council of New Orleans, addressed the large crowd at that grand opening. He said, This city of yours has for many years held in its bosom our thrifty Yugoslav fishermen who have, with God's will, inherited a great part of our Yugoslav soul. By your hard and honest work, as well as your intelligent efforts, you have greatly contributed to the upbuilding of this community and have considerably helped to put this city in line with other industrial centers in the South. And you have thereby contributed to the prestige and glory of Yugoslavia. In erecting this beautiful home, you have undoubtedly considered that the old members will gradually pass on from this world and their places will be taken by your children who will meet here and enjoy themselves as did their fathers and grandfathers. Slavic descendants did just that for many decades, thriving despite the assaults of hurricanes in 1947 and Betsy and Camille, and Frederick, and Elena. From its new location, the Slavonian Benevolent Association expanded its influence across Biloxi. Social events were open to non-members by invitation. The lodge became a meeting place and social register for the business and government leaders from across the Gulf Coast. Members regularly celebrated their culture with annual events that highlighted their heritage and they indulged themselves in American culture as well, even fielding a talented baseball team that performed well against the best regional semi-pro teams. In 1973, the Lodge initiated a golf championship for its members. A year later, the event was open to all interested golfers and the Slavic Invitational was born. Forty years later, it is the premier amateur golf tournament in the Southeast. As the golf tournament grew in prominence, so did the contributions of the Slavic community to Biloxi. All that changed momentarily when Hurricane Katrina arrived on August 29, 2005. Katrina wiped away the lodge building on Myrtle Street and took with it many of the membership's mementos and recorded history. It displaced our tributes to honored members past, and it forced a year's hiatus on the golf tournament. What it did not do, however, was dissuade our commitment and our resolve. Meetings were temporarily moved to the Masonic Building at Howard Avenue and Main Street, 
it was called the Mini Lodge. A building committee was formed to find a new, safer location for a new lodge and to identify funding sources for that new building. The golf tournament returned bigger and better in 2006. But the greatest accomplishment of all was the opening of our new $2 million Croatian American Cultural Center at the corner of Maple and 3rd Street in January of 2010. Today, 100 years after our first association was formed, we are as vital to Biloxi as any other civic group or organization, if not more so. We proudly exemplify not only the Slavic spirit and culture, but the American spirit as well. We are a people firmly grounded in our heritage and more committed than ever to our city, our country, and our future. And our new lodge will provide many opportunities to reinforce our history in Biloxi. Association President Andrew Fofo Gillich said it best. This building will be the centerpiece of our association activities for generations to come, and it will enable us to perpetuate the fellowship, the camaraderie, and the generosity of our members and their commitment to Biloxi.